Hey, everybody. This is Emily Moyer from Off Planet Radio, and I'm here with Randy Moggins. And um, we're just going to do a little chat today about um, some of the things that have been going on with us and with the show over the last seven, uh, several weeks. And, um, we, yeah, we just have some things we want to say about it. Um, and so that's what we're going to do here. Yep. Uh, yep. Yeah. Um, you know, we kind of found ourselves in a really – and I should probably, in some ways, I should hit myself for this. But we found ourselves in a really funny spot um, when uh, Randy made his post several weeks back about, um, you know, the cult of the around the cult like behavior going on around Corey Good and this secret space program stuff. And uh, I will accept responsibility for that because I was the one who pointed it out to, <laughs> pointed out to him the uh, um, that there was just something that didn't sit well with me about the the lineup of people at the contact in the desert. And uh, when I did that, I thought I was just sending him a, a message. I didn't understand what it would turn into. And it's been um, an unusual several weeks for us. But ultimately, I think it's um, caused some things to happen that needed to happen. Uh, it's brought some things to light. Um, and it's pushed us into conversations that were conversations that um, maybe we would not have had otherwise. And maybe we so maybe we didn't even necessarily want to have, um, but uh, this has well, been a very interesting. It's what we were talking about before we started to do this recording, Emily. There's a time and a place for confrontation. There's a time and a place for pulling communities together. And it's a really, really thin line that we're kind of walking right now. But to not call things out when they're so blatantly obvious... And given the shitstorm that we initiated doing this, it was a useful conversation to have because it it it, it enabled us to refine our thinking a little bit more as well. Yeah. Um, what we're really seeing right now is the old guard, which has been sitting out there in YouTube, the blogosphere, and generally in the communities that surround topics like disclosure. Um, Disclosure is the big one because that's what everybody's been pushing for. It's the, it's the big tent thing that everybody from Stephen Greer to David Wilcock to uh, all of these blogs that have been channeling these, the, um, the various councils, the galactic councils and whatnot, have been pushing for. It's kind of like humanity knows that they've kind of been duped. And that's a natural human impulse. But now we're kind of at the place where we're understanding that the mechanism of inquiring about truth itself has been weaponized against us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess I find myself in, in some ways in a funny space in this community that we're in is that like disclosure was never something that I thought about or was important to me or or whatever. Like, it's not that I don't want to know the truth. Obviously, I do. I've spent, you know, countless uh, hours, years, months, whatever researching things but I never thought like I, I never thought that anything was going to be disclosed to me or to us I always thought that whatever truth I was going to find I was going to have to dig it out myself and with the, the people that I was working on this with and so I guess for me um, this whole I mean with no offense to anybody this whole disclosure thing is never, you know, people wanting it and people wanting it from the government or from the same people that uh, told us lies in the first place is in some ways kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Well, um, and yeah. for people who have had unique experience, I don't consider disclosure to be, quote, like the alien disclosure thing so much. Right. Although to just, it goes into that. Yeah. But the, I, I, yeah. But for people that have had experiences... In any realm, whether it's been in black operations, alien abductions, my labs, um, you already have your disclosure. You already yeah. know. And for those who haven't, let me just say it's a steep learning curve to get there. And those people are even among our family and friends and people that we socialize and do business with every day. I mean... You can't take an entire race of people and bring them all up to the same level at once. It's it's not going to happen. Mm -mm. No, it's not going to happen. And you know, it's um, quite frankly, if um, 
some kind of truth was delivered to me at this point. Like if all of a sudden, like the documents showed up proving the things that I suspect about myself or that others suspect about the things that have happened to them or about the truth about what's real. I, I, at this point, I don't know that I would even believe that. I mean, this whole exercise for me and for some other people that I speak with is an exercise of really going inside your own self. I mean, disclosure for you is only going to come from with like, like everything else we say. This is an inside job. Like the disclosure yeah. is going to come from within. The truth is in in there, and it doesn't. You know, we're in this really funny place where, like, we um, on the one hand, there's people who want like documented, evidentiary proof before they're they're able, they're wanting to believe or willing to accept or tolerate anything. And on the other hand, we have these people who like are just weaving these like completely fantastic bullshit narratives complete with, you know, uh, characters and props that are, you know, ridiculous. Um, and both ends, and you've been had some really good posts lately alluding to this, both ends are a problem because what you have in the middle is, um, a group of people that has more, more, more members than, than people would suspect that are honestly trying to understand themselves and understand uh, their experience here and what has happened to them. And for, for um, those people, there is not going to be uh, documents proving their experiences. And there is also not going to be um, blue birds and spheres coming to save them or to, you know, uh, to, to, to fix this. And all, you know, we, there's people Just that even, need... even the word disclosure. I yeah. think what most people really want is closure. Closure. They, want, they, they want their yes. experiences wrapped up in a package and understood. And then disclosure comes in and says... That third party government have entities to, yes, have, have to, to tell you. Have to quote this. That's exactly right. In other words, all of your closure is cloaked in third party disclosure of documents. Yeah. And and so this will just kind of take us where we want to go because what this is basically is a disclaimer that we're going to do on some shows we've already put out and some shows that are coming in the pipeline. Um, in terms of what you're going to find if you're honestly digging, I'm reading Anatoly Fomenko right now, um, History, Fiction, or Science. It's a, like a 935-page book. Yeah, I, I'm only like into three chapters of it. My jaw is like continuously on the table because he nails the proofs that tell you that everything you know about history right up to the beginning of the 20th century it's has bullshit. been completely been written, not even yeah. rewritten. In some cases, timelines have been collapsed into each other. Entire civilizations have been replicated. Yep. Um, the fact that the Jesuits have largely doctored all of the historical documents leading up to the beginning of the 20th century. And we've seen history rewritten in shorter and shorter bursts across the last 15 to 20 years as well. And now it's, now it's speeding up. So we're relying on one hand on anecdotal evidence from experiencers, which is kind of where you and I come from in terms of what we would call the research community. And it's legitimate. On the other side, you have hard researchers, people like Joseph Farrell, Rich Dolan, Catherine Austin Fitz. There's a plethora of writers out there who have done what I consider to be very good scholarly work, but disregarded completely the evidence mm -hmm. that is in the body of people who are experiencers. Yeah, I mean, for all of the things that their research, for all of the evidence that their research has uncovered, there has to have been people other than scientists and, you know, whatnot involved in it. And, you know, some of us, some, uh, you know, there, there's people that are, that are those people and there should be, you know, there should be some level of discourse and discussion, even if it's just, um, casual, 
between us and the people doing that kind of research, doing that kind of research without, you know, none, none of us are trying to say, yes, we know for sure this is what happened. Well, there's, there's a small group, you know, there, that's the other side. You have someone like Corey Good doing, coming out there and like saying like the, really quite honestly, the most far-fetched and re- one of the most ridiculous stories I've heard and all these people believing that and which is fine, like, uh, which is fine, but that is preventing there from being, and I think that's the reason it's there. It is, that is there to prevent these other people in the middle who are trying to come to terms with their experiences from having conversations with those doing hard research that we can both stand to learn, gain from, to learn from each other. And, um, I don't know, everyone who I consider to be I'm genuinely working on themselves and trying to come to terms with things that happened to them. We all appreciate those researchers. We all don't want to see their work muddied, but we also, you know, and we, we, we don't even necessarily want their work to be um, met, mixed in and combined with ours, but we need conversations between ourselves. We, we need conversations to start happening so that we can actually um, do something besides just keep talking about this. Like, you know what I mean? All like there's been, think about this in this last 10 or 15 or 20 years where there's been this rise of the alternative media community or whatever we're going to, we're calling this thing that we're in. There's been so much talking about stuff. We talk about everything. We spend hours and hours listening to videos, researching, reading stuff, talking, whatever. And we, you know, we've gotten some places, but like we're, we're coming to a spot now where we really need to make some changes in how we deal with things going forward. We need to stop um, reacting to what's been done to us and start, you know, taking all of the things we learned and just going our own way and doing something else. And I feel like that, you know, can most effectively happen if we can break down these barriers. Everybody needs to stop being um, elitist with their information and everybody stop needs, needs to stop um, BSing. And it doesn't mean you have to be right all the time. We all make mistakes. Like, you know, there's already things that I, you know, I've been doing a lot of work on myself the last couple of years and, and things that I thought were exactly one way. Some of them I have different thoughts about now. And it's not because that was a lie or, or whatever. Like, you know, you have people telling their stories and we're just trying to work through this. We are a civilization that has been lied to and that has been traumatized. And we don't, it's, it's not clear what has happened to us. And, you know, um, that's a very real process to be in and a very real struggle. And we need to, um, find a way to, uh, um, clean this out. We need, like, we need to clean this out so we can actually like come up with something that is, you know, beneficial and will help us to move forward and start to create what we want instead of talking about what we don't like that's already been done to us. What's what's occurred by design through engineering is the creation of an echo chamber within the media itself, largely being Facebook, YouTube, Twitter to a lesser degree. We have constant call and response, um, reaction, action. But what's being echoed is essentially tributaries of a same disinformation campaign. So, you know, on the one hand, just to use an example of what's occurring in the webosphere right now, you have um, Jordan Sather versus dark journalist Daniel, Daniel List. And whatever side people are on right now, they're championing, championing their guy. Right. And forgetting that both of them are simply two sides of the same coin, and the same coin is a closed argument system. Because yeah. what they're really talking about, when you boil the arguments down, there's two tributaries of the same intelligence stream that was piped out there to lead you to conclusions that kept you away from authentically doing an inquiry into alternatives. The example being what we have hypothesized over the last six months at least, in terms of challenging the narrative of a secret space program, which is based on the concept that there is space as we understand it. And the idea that all of this is is like this breakaway civilization. Well, if it's a breakaway civilization, why are they still here? 
And why are we <laughs> bitching about it? This is like Stockholm Syndrome on steroids because we're just looping back into the same inescapable conclusion that we're screwed. And that's not yeah. the case, but the only way you get unscrewed is to detach from the narrative that you've been fed and to go down a more authentic path. And so, yeah. you know, a lot of what we've done is we've tapped into <clears throat> memories, dreams, visions, understandings about what we authentically believe. And there's researchers out there um, that have really kind of almost bumped up against this. And there are people now bumping up against it. This concept that space, quote, is not the outer space picture that has been painted through science proper and sci-fi as a propaganda medium, but an inner dimension that yep. maps to an inner dimension on the Earth itself and also has as a conduit portals that are aquatic or oceanic. I mean... Yep, that's are, exactly right. They're, they're abstractions, and we're still working through the abstractions, but I can tell you that by going down that path of inquiry, we now have a cleaner narrative to work from because it hasn't been exploited. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, um, that was very well said, Randy. I, I completely agree with you. Um, you know, we're, And again, we are just authentically and genuinely exploring these ideas as they come up for us and for the people that we're in communication with. But, um, you know, this is, you know, this is an area that needs to be explored without the polarization of the other two things, without the polarization of the, the two ends of the, of the, of the secret space program spectrum that we've, um, described. And I just want to say something briefly about, um, Daniel List and Jordan Sather, um, I spoke with Jordan Sather um, about a week or two before Contact in the Desert, and um, he was very kind. He was very, very nice and kind to me, um, and I thought he was a nice kid. Um, but I did warn him that he's got, you know, that he does, this is not something that he really wants to be involved in, and you know, he assured me that he, you know, uh, was aware of all the issues and problems with it, whatever. And then, you know, he seemed like a smart kid and like he had a reasonable head on his shoulders. And then, liter quite literally, the next day after we had the conversation, he had some posts about this project he was going to be involved in with Corey Good and uh, Michael Sala and whatever. And so, either in one ear and out the other. I mean, I don't expect him to listen to me. I don't. I don't care. Um, I, I, he seemed like a nice person and I wish him, uh, no harm, but, um, uh, he seemed, I, you know, there's something funny going on here. It doesn't make any sense. Um, I've taken a look at his work and, um, on the outside, some of it seems good, but on the inside, what is happening is that he's actually not saying anything. He's just, um, he's just he's going reverberating. over, he's, he's reverberating. reverberating the same memes over again. And in a lot yeah. of cases, he doesn't really know where they came from. Like I yeah. said, you know, before we went to air, he is, a, he, when you go back and you look at the circles that these people travel in, you know, the locus right now is Stonus in the Storm, which is a very pro Corey Good David Wilcox site. Yeah. That you know. attacked me about two weeks ago. And I wrote a response to them which they did not publish. Of course not. Clarified the, the, the position that I was coming from, and also the fact that I have been exploited, you have been exploited in all of this as well, because what occurred was that a Facebook post that was intended for an audience of less than 1,500 people, which means probably only 150 people would have ever seen it, and probably only 10 of those would have responded, became a big deal because it got posted by a friend of mine on the Project Avalon, and Bill Ryan used it as a means to launch back into the Corey Good thing with the proximity date of contact in the desert, thus eliciting the invitation by Daniel List to then yeah. do a full-blown interview, which put Bill Ryan back into the spotlight, which then triggered Carrie Cassidy, who also wanted to be seen talking about this, yeah. We, you, all, this is the what what I just detailed there is the exact echo effect that we're getting. 
we're right back to 2011 again, which is why I posted yeah. on yes. Facebook the list of blogs that I did from 2011, 2012, because nothing's new and all we're doing is looping again. Yeah, I mean that you know. So I addressed Jordan Sather, the thing with Jordan Sather, and I'll just want to finish real fast and say that yes. you know he breaks, he has these videos where he like breaks down some ish topic or issue that seems to be on people's minds, um, but he doesn't. He, you know, a lot of people have criticized him for not, uh, you know, doing his own research or whatever. And I, and I, he doesn't have any interesting or new information, and that's true, and and that that's okay. But he also doesn't really seem to have an opinion about anything. He's just kind of breaking stuff down and and um, seeming like he has some level of wisdom or insight about it. And I'm not, I'm not doubting. I mean, when I spoke with him, he obviously knows some stuff, um, but he's it's what I consider to be like uh, not misinformation or disinformation. It's non-information. There is nothing new being gleaned from what he is bringing to like, he's just echoing things and he's being, in my opinion, he's being used to play a role. Um, and, um, you know, I, it, 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 not well, good. It, it gives them a gateway into Corey's kids, which is yes. the program, which is a very real thing, which is, a, I mean, it's, it's a very, um, a very, it's a very real thing. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just want to say something real quick, you know, as for Daniel list, um, I actually think, you know, that, and you know, maybe I'm trying, trying, trying to figure out how to deal with this with him. Cause he's someone that you and I haven't ever spoken to. And, but I, I do believe he's done a lot of good work. I've listened to a lot of the interviews he's done. We've, you, there's been same people on his shows that have been on our show, and you've certainly done tons of interviews with Joseph Farrell. Um, and I think he's this series he has going right now about the new age and this, you know, the the, the dark. You know, the he's got like an eight part series. He's three in. Um, I think pretty much the uh, stuff he's saying is right. I think he's doing a good job with that. The only problem I have with Daniel, Daniel List is that he chose to do what he did with Bill Ryan. And, um, you know, Bill Ryan has been out of the picture for a long time. And suddenly like, he jumped on this thing that you did. I mean, your post was the catalyst for this thing going on with Bill Ryan. And, it, you know, Bill Ryan has, and Gary Cassidy, through Camelot and Avalon, have been trying to, in a slightly different way, control this same sort of cluster the bubble of information and you know it's been very clear to me because i you know even before i joined you on the show i was you know a listener of yours for since the very beginning and you know there is some undeniable connection um between you and them in terms of they are you know like the way it feels like to me is they're there to um roadblock people like you and, and i from getting to, to from being able to you know, how, like, not to get from us being able to get to truth because we're doing what we're doing, but to sort of um, act as like a net or a filter that catches catches you before you know what you're saying gets out to too many people and to then distort it. And that's exactly what happened with this Bill Ryan thing. So you know, this whole thing that Bill Ryan did, and he um, he even said so in his original article, though he in intentionally misspelled your name, which is what they do. You know, just like Jordan Sather was intentionally missaying jo Daniel List's name the other day, which I don't, which is, you know, is ridiculous. Um, it, it's a classic, you know, stupid intelligence agency thing to intentionally say someone's name wrong or misspell it. But, there, you know, I don't understand why Daniel List didn't come to you. And, at, you know, you're, you're where this originated from. Um, and Bill Ryan came in and, you know, yeah, a lot of the things Bill Ryan said was true and right, but he's doing something that is what those two, Carrie Cassidy and Bill Ryan, have always been doing in that they're, you know, sowing seeds of discord into what, what would otherwise be good, helpful, truthful information. Um, they're, they're creating a dissonance in the mind of the people listening to them. And I don't know if Daniel List, um, I, like, I don't know why he would, you know, in my opinion, Bill Ryan is not of the quality and character of most of the other people that Daniel List has interviewed over the years, you know, um, and so I, and he did, gave him this huge platform when um, Bill Ryan hasn't really done anything in years and years. It seems like he just sprung up out of nowhere to catch this storm that you had created, um, you know, so may Daniel List, if you hear this, um, we, you know, I think we both respect a lot of aspects of your work and maybe, maybe at some point we should have a conversation. 
Um, you know, I, I do think this series you're engaged in right now about the Corey's kids and whatever is very good. Um, but also, you know, are you, are, are, unbeknownst to you or whatever, are you being um, used to play some kind of role? I, you know, I, you know this, I'm, not ask, I'm not saying this. Um, I'm not accusing you of anything. I actually, you know, my, 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 I, I'm more, I more feel, have positive feelings about you than anything else. But um, I feel like there's an opportunity here possibly for some kind of conversation and dialogue that could help us start to um, break through some of these barriers that we're, that we're trying to get past. Um, sorry for long, long-winded rant there, but what do you, what do you think? No, it wasn't. You know, like all we're doing is just kind of feeding off of each other right now in terms of yeah. you, you're echoing it. The, the point isn't who got credit for the cool not at controversy. All. Uh, and the point isn't that he should have interviewed me rather than Bill Ryan. It's that he doesn't have the depth to understand what I identified back in 2011 with Project Camelot and Project Avalon as being gatekeepers and handlers. Yeah. And for all the reasons that I exposed in those blog posts, which I, I'll put the link up with this show because they're on now on a separate website. These are posts that were archived. From the, the original Off Planet Radio website was, was, was hosted on a separate system. And when I redid the website back in 2013, I had to split blog posts from the posts that contained the podcasts, the radio shows, and the videos. So that kind of went on to a separate site and got archived because I wanted it on the record. But because of some things that happened in the, in the area of 2011 and 2012 that I'm not going to go into now, I was exposed to just how malevolent mm -hmm. the forces behind some of these major websites really were, how toxic they were, and in one case, how deadly they were. Now, yes, We've gone through cycles, and we. one of the things that I've reiterated several times when I've talked about this is we've got to break the cycle of death because last year we went through the Max Spears thing. Back in 2012, at the end of 2012, we lost Chris Neal, who was doing major yeah. expository work specifically into pedophilia, child trafficking, and child torture as a result of MK Ultra, and all of that got shouted down on the websites from uh, former White Hat and the Idlewild group, which was a larger ring of conspirators that linked back to Kerry Cassidy and Project Camelot. Yeah. So we're not just dealing here with a war of personalities because I'm not interested in the personalities, but I am interested in the character of the people involved. Sure. So yeah, no, I. Yeah, where, I agree. Yeah. Where we're going with this today in terms of disclaimering some things is that we have both released interviews and will release interviews with certain people, specifically on some of the topics we just talked about, that contain statements that I think Emily and I don't agree with completely. In some cases, not at all, yes. <laughs> in some cases, not at all. So I will cite as an example because it's out there, it's on the record, the interview we did with Alfred Lambermont Weber. And I'll be transparent about this. I had a huge blow up with Alfred Lambermont Weber last year because Alfred had gone down the path where the alien-human hi alien hybrid program was producing a new wave of human 2.0. Now... You can argue about all of this, but what I know, because of my encounters with them, is that the alien-human hybrids are an attempt to do a replacement civilization on humanity. Whether you agree that this is a real thing or a psyop in terms of my labs or something like that, the core aspect of alien-human hybrids has to do with very large-scale eugenics programs aimed at swapping out legitimate human DNA and consciousness and substituting it with an artificial intelligence unit. Yeah. So Alfred and I had a falling out over that, and as a result of negotiations in the background, Alfred came back on. He was very gracious. He apologized for the flap that we had together, and we had what I considered overall to be 
a pretty high-spirited and generally congenial conversation. That said, in that conversation, there were people mentioned and specific areas of inquiry where Emily and I were not completely down with what was said. But it has never been my style to bring somebody into an interview and then ambush them. I don't do that. I will gently probe the edges of what somebody's saying, but for the most part, I've tried as much as possible, and Emily completely understands and follows the same principle that if we brought somebody on, we wanted them to be heard. There's no way we can control the narrative in a fluid conversation, and I'm not going to have conversations if I have to edit three quarters of the content on it. So what you get and what you have gotten over the years on Off Planet Radio have been a, an accurate rendition of the actual conversations that occurred. Some of them occurred on live radio broadcasts, so there was a live record there, and some of them were pre-recorded interviews where occasionally we clean up sound, we may take out um, annoying aspects of, of, the, of the conversation, but I can honestly say that I've never redacted conversations or edited them in a way to change the content itself. Sometimes I make uh, yeah, annoying background noises with my <laughs> with my my beverages and whatnot, and, and you know we don't ever take out content from the show. Is what he's saying. Um, and yeah, you know we had Alfred on, um, which you know I'm gonna I'll be honest, like I you know he was very nice. Um, it's not necessarily a show that I would have you know normally selected to do, but he there was a few things that he said in there that I thought were important and valuable. And I did take him to task on some things that I just can't some you know he's there's so many sort of programs that are ID you know that he that, I mean, I say pro, uh, pro yeah, there's so much programming running through him. It is but a programming. What's that? What's it is a programming. programming. We've all got programming, and he just has many of them running through him. Um, and but you know, I think there was a few really interesting points in the conversation, and um, he did he did make me laugh. And sometimes that's that, that you know that that sometimes that's priceless. But yeah, like you know, a lot of the people that he feels are respectable, and a lot of the ideas that he thinks are acceptable. Um, um, to me, absolutely or not. I do not believe in any form of treaties uh, any with aliens. I don't believe in any signing any more declarations or accords. I don't. You guys all know. I don't even believe in government. I think it is a religion. I don't want. I don't want anything to do with any of that stuff. And I don't think there's any kind of um, political or exopolitical or financial solution to the problems that we have. And I think when he gets wrapped up in some of these things, it's like, uh, to me, it's you know, kind of silly and a waste of time. But he's been around for a really long time. He knows a lot of the characters involved, and he did have some things of value to say. And, um, you know, yeah. And so uh, it was an interesting, an interesting show. Um, it, yeah, and that's kind of what I have to say about it is I, you know, I – mostly disagree with what he says. Um, but I also think that he is, um, he's, he as weird as this sounds, he is trying to speak his truth. You know what I mean? Like he has all of this stuff going on for him in his head. And I don't think this is stuff that he is, um, you know, uh, fabricating. Like I think that whatever he's respond, whatever he's speaking about is, is what he really at that moment anyway, believes to be going on and is, you know, kind of sold on. I don't think he, uh, comes out and spews a bunch of bullshit and then goes, goes off camera and says, ah, those stupid idiots. I don't really believe the things I said. I just told him that. I think he believes what he's talking about. Um, and, um, well, people come from their training and their background. Yeah, we all do. And, I went down a lot of rabbit holes where I later on had to examine what I believed even about my own experiences, my own individual truths. I've constantly reviewed that. And the yeah. problem with this is, and Alfred's a good example of this, is he has training and background in a number of areas, specifically law. And he views law as a solution Whereas my yeah. understanding of law is that laws were created for the lawless. That's actually in some of the ancient writings as well, that effectively 
free will human beings who have right consciousness and right heart don't require yeah. laws because they're governed by the higher law. And I will not say the law of one, Mr. Will. Yeah, no. But yeah. So, so Alfred comes from this place where he's still trying to apply laws and, and he created this terminology, which Michael Sala co-opted, called exopolitics, which would be great if we were having interactions as equals with these entities, these beings, the extra dimensionals, the uh, subterranean beings, whatever they are. But most of this is a smokescreen yeah. for military industrial operations that are mind control abduction scenarios yeah. used to weaponize human beings and to weaponize the system and the planet itself against that's, them. That's exactly right, yeah. So I will apply the same standards to people like Joseph Farrell, who's done extensive work, great books, uh, wonderful research specifically into the Third Reich, the Nazis, the technology, the Nazi bell. He goes into the cosmic wars. He goes into technology that streams into free energy. This is all wonderful research. But understand something. Joseph Farrell writes from a perspective. He has a certain narrative installed into his writings based on his own studies, his own background, his own inclinations to think yeah. in a certain way. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's still a vertical aspect to this, which goes yeah. over into people like Daniel List. Because if you look at who Daniel List has interviewed, it's been Joseph Farrell and Catherine Austin Fitz. Rich Mainly, Dolan. yeah. These are hard documentary researchers. And they all are streaming towards a certain place that's still locked into a mindset of secret space program, breakaway civilization, right. all these laws like the National Security Act, which is completely illegal. Yeah. And we wind up looping back over it because we have no solutions because we're still inside of we, the Aurorabus, which is eating its own tail. Yes. Yeah, no, I, I mean, absolutely. I, for me, I have to draw some distinction between someone like Alfred Lemermont Weber and, and Joseph Farrell. I think Joseph Farrell's, um, there's a lot more, um, for me, there's a lot more truth there. Um, but I, I agree with what you're saying about, you know, it's a, cer it's a certain kind of thing. And he definitely writes from a perspective. Um, to me, his information in a lot of ways is more helpful and useful than a lot of other people's. Um, but yes, it's, it's uh, you know, in a certain area with, from a certain perspective and um, doesn't take, you know, certain other things into account. That, that's okay, as long as we recognize that that's, you know, what it is. I, I very much appreciate his work. And yeah, no, I'm grateful it. for the information yeah. that I've gleaned from all of these writers. And there's books that I go back to on a consistent basis for factually based information or yeah. to get a, a certain perspective. Yeah. But it's not useful to vertically integrate with just no. a certain component of research that's inside your, your wheelhouse. Yeah. You have to go outside of the wheelhouse and more importantly, you have to go inside of what yes. is essentially the internal activation. Yeah, and no, I mean, I can, yeah. What I, we're I trying mean. to do with this show is move the conversation away from the way standard topics, topics have been handled and to move this into an internal process, which then externalizes out in very interesting ways. So you yeah. get Sethicus Bosa, you get Aurora, and amazingly enough, they're talking similar concepts coming from completely different disciplines I mean, and yeah. viewpoints. I mean, can you, you couldn't possibly imagine two people who present themselves in more polar opposite ways exactly. than yeah. Aurora and Seth against Boza. Yeah. But if you listen to the content of those interviews, I'd say the overlap is phenomenal in what we we're talking about. Um, you know, and so we are... And I consider both of those people, along with us, to be involved right now in a very internal process where we're going to use creativity and um, collaboration as the way out of this. And um, that's what we're interested in. We're interested in that. In that. We're, we want to do that. We want to explore ourselves. We want to share what we find with each other. And then we want to come up with a creative way, way for us to work together to solve these problems to, you know, and to extricate ourselves from the system that we didn't create and the system that we were, you know, 
forced into and, you know, in some cases, you know, victimized by, um, but trying to operate within that system and, and the rules and parameters of that system is not going to work. And um, both, you know, and so we're trying to do something else and we are going, we are going to have to um, sing and dance and art and create our way out of this. We are not going to get disclosure and find our way out of this that way. Um, Information yeah. doesn't set you free. Information is just a processing co uh, complex. So once you have a certain amount of information, then it becomes a question of what you're going to do with the information. And it's going to depend on whether that information was correct in the first place. So yeah. part, of, part of the process is to also challenge sure. the narrative externally and the narrative internally. Internally. Because yeah. we process these things and we internalize certain aspects they become real. Uh, we give them life because we're creator beings. So concepts become reality and we operate off of concepts. And this again goes back to the whole, the whole echo effect that has gone on in the webosphere is that it's been in tighter and tighter circles to the place where you have the disclosure groups and the kind of love and lighter galactic council, new age, um, oh my dear ones type impartations. And then you have the, the harsher side of it, which is the reality of mind control operations, the, the, the planetary wars that have gone on. There's different spectrums in all of this, but you have to constantly go back and reevaluate what you've internalized and be willing to tear up your own internal roots in order to have an authentic narrative that you can kind of do the refresh button on. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, no, that's exactly right. So in terms um, of disclaimering things, did we disclaimer enough or do we need to go further? <laughs> well, I think we, I, I think we need to talk about, uh, the, I want to talk a little bit about the upcoming show that we're getting ready to release. Um, you know, we have a show that we recorded last week that we'll be releasing shortly, uh, with Andrew Bashago. And, um, first of all, I want to say, um, much love and respect to Andrew. Um, it was a conversation I had been looking forward to having for um, a very long time. There are undeniable aspects of the undeniable similarities between where Andrew and I come from and our stories. And so I've been looking forward to talking to him for a long time. Um, that said, you guys, uh, I, I, you guys will probably notice when you listen to the interview that I hardly spoke at all, um, which is very unusual for me. <laughs> and um, I, I can't get down with a lot of what he had to say in terms of um, uh, people that he admires and respects and people who, you know, yeah, I don't actually have a problem with when he talks about his own self and his own story and his own experience. Um, you know, whether or not you believe him or is not the issue. He is, to the best of his ability, speaking his truth as he understands it, and he has received tremendous ridicule, harassment, and, uh, you know, challenges because of that. Um, you know, he, uh, he's been saying the same thing for a really long time. He's telling the truth as he understands it. And, um, but in terms of, there's a lot of discussion about other, uh, researchers or other people in this community that he finds to be accepted, similar with, you know, Alfred, there's people that he finds to be acceptable and respectable that I do not. And so, um, you know, and um, that said, he also, in this interview, there are several important things that come to light. Um, and it was a long interview. And, and um, you know, I, uh, I, I, there was points during the interview, and I experienced, and I'm just going to share this here, I experienced this quite frequently um, with certain individuals and certain information that, um, which is not normal for me. This is not how I normally am that I, that I, uh, become sleepy. Like I'm hit with sleep programming or I become disoriented or confused, um, which tells me there's something there and it might not even be exactly how there's, you know, the content created, but you know, with Andrew Bashago, there's, if you really listen to sort of the space between the words of what he's saying, there's something there that's really important. And um, for me, um, I guess when I think about myself and some of my own experiences, um, 
what we're dealing with here is a perceptive difference. Like he's reporting his experiences as he understood them and he feels them. And, and when I look at my, some of my experiences, which, you know, I see a mind control experience and he sees a space and time travel experience. Um, but he's too, um, he's, you know, there's something he has received nothing but you know, ridicule for sharing his story. And then you have someone, you know, the whole Corey Good thing that has all of the f- aspects of Andrew's story that people find to be fantastic that are in Corey's story. And then there's also the bluebirds and the spheres and all this other silly nonsense. And for some reason, ha- somehow Corey Good has achieved um, fame and financial freedom and all of this stuff. And Andrew has had his life in a lot of ways destroyed. Um, you know, so I have respect for him. I have compassion for him. And, um, he does not deserve to be, you know, called some of the crazy things people call him. Um, but I also can't get down with some of the things he had to say about some of the things he had to say. Um, you know, and there's, uh, we had a, a, a private conversation after the show where we got to share some things. And, um, that was really interesting for me. And, you know, maybe someday we'll, you know, share some of those things with people publicly. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that, like, you know, you can, um, we need to be able to interact with each other, even if we don't agree with each other on everything. And even if we, um, have major problems with certain aspects of each other's narratives and stories, because we're, we're trying to get to truth and there's a lot, you know, and even if, not everything is right, even if you know we were getting some things wrong. There are some very important things in what he's talking about that people need to sit with and pay attention to. Um, and so, yeah, um, but I did have some level of um, discomfort during during that show with some of the things that were being said. And um, for myself, I can't, I can't, you know, I know the people who've been listening to our show for a long time probably have a good understanding of what my feelings are about things, but we have a lot of new listeners and a lot of people who haven't heard the, the narrative or the or the sort of work that Randy and I have been doing leading into this, and I can't allow, I can't have them think that I'm okay with some of the things that were said in the show. And so um, I just wanted to say that, and yeah. Yeah, that well, right? I, you know, it's probably useful to do this as a kind of blanket thing. I mean, I don't know how many interviews I've I've never counted the shows I've put up, but there's hundreds, and there's certainly over 300 interviews on YouTube alone right now. Um, there are those moments when you do an interview, and you allow somebody to unfold their narrative, and you have that moment when you're going, holy crap, what did I do? And for the most part, it's not a big problem. Um, I try not to let things blow up. But it, I think it's useful for listeners, viewers, people who are partaking of any type of media to know there's a fair amount of ambiguity that goes on in the background of this process. It's not perfect. I can't vet somebody perfectly. Um, I've tried over the years to read the books of the people I interview, if they're authors, or to look at their websites, yeah, me to too. call their information. Is, but... It's become extremely impossible to do that given the volume of material that's being produced. Now, Og Teles is a great example of this. And I mean, Og is putting out volumes of material. Much of it is very useful, but a lot of it needs to be boiled down into harder concepts. And that's just the way Og operates. Og is operating on a time scale right now where he feels he needs to blow out this information as quickly as possible. And I support him doing that. And I, I support the message that he's putting out. Do I agree with everything he says? No. No. Same thing with Shane, the ruiner. Do I yeah. agree with everything they say and do? No. And we're good enough friends that sometimes I will express my displeasure with certain things that happen in a way that's non-threatening, but basically going, mm, I really wasn't comfortable with that. And the same thing back. I mean... We take feedback from each other. And I think the, way, the, the best way to look at this is that I don't have a list of enemies. I didn't go and put Kerry Cassidy, Bill Ryan, David Wilcock, and a lot of these other people on an enemies list and then go after them and, and obsessively attack them. I revisited this matter with Kerry Cassidy largely because Kerry went out of her way 
to put comments on my interview with Shane on YouTube, indicating falsely, I mean, this is just a lie, that she was primary source for the query good material, when in fact she was nothing near it. She turned down his interview, which I don't blame her for. She was not part of Avalon. If she monitored it, that was great. But the two people who were closest to the source were the two people I interviewed, which was Christine Anderson and Shane the Ruiner, because those, were, those two people were both directly involved with the earliest process of the emergence of Corey Good. Yeah. Did you, did you, um, did Carrie Cassidy ever get back to you? Oh no, I don't expect that she will. Oh, yeah, I didn't think, yeah, I didn't, no. I didn't think so. Um, yeah, yeah. So. That's just territory marking. She was just putting a flag up there. Yeah. I yeah, would no, have I agree. agreed with most of, you know, I finally got through that interview just for the record. <clears throat> I could not watch the video. It was just too painful. So <laughs> I, I took the video and ripped it to an MP3 and listened to it over the course of two days. There are things in that interview, which it wasn't an interview, it really wasn't even a conversation. To be quite honest, Shane was there as background material for Carrie to be heard saying certain things. Mm. And to Shane's good credit, he sat through it, he was very polite, he interacted appropriately, but it was not in any way a meaningful conversation. So, <laughs> you know, I'm not talking out of class here because I've already expressed this to Shane. Um, quite simply, she wanted to be relevant in a situation in which she's not relevant anymore. And that's unfortunately the sad part of this, this, this whole webosphere thing is that right now the Corey Good thing is a hot meme. I would prefer to move on to another. I'm over it. Let's please move yeah. on. Yeah, we've got to move on. As far as people like Jordan, I mispronounced his name. I said Sather. You said Sather. It, so I, it, it may be Sather. That's what Daniel List is saying. Uh, when I look at it, my phonics and my, uh, you know, tells me that it's Sather. Um, so I'm not, it, I, it, it, it's either Sather or Sather. I'm, I'm not I'm trying to mispronounce it or do any of that kind of no, stuff. No, no. And look, uh, here's yeah. the thing. I'm not offended that Bill Ryan misspelled my name. Or that Carrie Cassidy mispronounced my name, except I know they know better. And right. in the course of That's Jordan, the whole, yes. you know, if we mispronounced your name, um, no disrespect intended. We're not that yeah. I'm not personally as familiar. And, yeah, and I Jordan, wouldn't do and that. Jordan, if you Jordan, if you hear this, like I do, I'm not saying any of these things as uh, like, you know, I, I we had, you and I had a nice conversation. I think you're a nice kid. And um, be careful. That's it. Like, I don't, you know, like yeah. you're, you're, you're swimming with sharks and, um, you know, just, it, it, I, and I, I do have to say this actually, um, it, you're, th th how quickly you've risen is not, is not natural. And I'm not no. saying that you haven't worked hard. You and I had a conversation. I, I believe you worked hard. I know you, I know you have, you know, a family and whatever that you take care of. I don't, I, I think you're a hard worker and I think you're, I also think you're probably well-intended. Um, but there's people who have been working in this arena for, for years and years and years and years and years. And, uh, you know, with, we, you know, with a much smaller audience than you have, and it isn't anything about jealousy. Um, could be quite honest. Um, we don't really want a much larger audience than we have. It's nice that we're growing, but we consider what we do to be underground radio. And we're perfectly content with that. Yeah. Um, sure, there are other people out there who would like to have the level of success that you're having, um, and some of them, you know, but uh, some of them have achieved it with ten years. I mean, you had the number of subscribers you have. There's other shows out there that have been working for ten years for that, and that you have it in six months is not because you worked harder or because you're bringing any special information. It's because there is something inorganic that is supporting that, and it's probably unbeknownst to you. So, you know. Um, this is not a judgment of you. And I think that, you know, you treated me with respect and I think I treated you with respect and, um, uh, just be careful and, um, check in with yourself and make sure, you know, just check in with yourself often. Don't let yourself, um, you know, it's, it's, you're, there's a lot of, you have a lot of momentum right now and you can be swept in a direction that is not where you intended to go. So just be careful. And there's, um, you know, and if you, 
if you have questions or you want to turn back, there's people there that, that will be willing to help you and support you. So, um, yeah, and I would say that almost the same thing to Daniel List that say, you've done some yeah. good work. Um, you got an opportunity to host the Secret Space Program. Um, Daniel List, you and I are only con- you and I are connected in three degrees right now because we know the same people and we've worked within the same organization. So there's no reason why we can't have a dialogue as well. I don't think any of the people that we've talked about in this segment are dishonest or wrong. I think what's happening is that people are being exploited because right now they want to create a dichotomous situation that fractures the community and allows them to come in. Don't forget this. This is huge. The statements that were made by Robert Bigelow this week about extraterrestrials already being here. Robert Bigelow is one of the biggest gatekeepers yep. in the UFO scene. He is a he is a billionaire. He has financed MUFON. He has usurped the records of abductees held by MUFON. He is a he is he has usurped FAA reporting of pilot first encounters yeah. with UFO craft. He took over the Skinwalker Ranch and locked it down. And he is sitting at the helm of SpaceX, which is another run to privatize, quote, space, meaning the military industrial complex, because NASA is losing credibility and failing. And they need to privatize this so that they can pull funds outside of non outside of traditional methods of funding through the government. So they're running a lot of ops right now. It's very busy, very active. Um, A lot of signal-to-noise ratio, bandwidth scrambling going on. And sometimes the only thing you can do is is take your eyes off the computer and go inside. Yeah, go inside, go out into nature, connect with yourself, connect with the people around you. Um, And yes, we're ready to kind of move on from this topic. We are. Um, We have, um, we have, we're going to start taking things in, you know, a little, not a different, we will always do sort of what we do, but we're, we have some new things coming in that we're very excited about. Some very cool shit coming. Some very cool shit coming in um, that will, you know, uh, for over the next couple of weeks, our, our output might be a little bit less, but it's because we're gearing up to start bringing something truly unique um, and that we're super excited about. And, um, and yeah, and uh, we really, I'm, I'm super looking forward to some of the things we have going on, we have coming up going forward. Um, and um, there are also, we've received lots of really nice um, communication from listeners in the last couple of, of weeks and months and a lot of support. And um, we appreciate that. And um, there's lots of people who've been asking how and when they can support us. And we will be coming up with a way for you guys to support us. Yeah. Um, we, you know, both Randy and I, um, we're not interested in getting rich doing this, but we've been really working hard for a very long time and never asked, have never asked for at Randy for a very, very long time has never asked for anything. And uh, we've, you know, this past year and certainly for the past six months, especially we've worked exhaustedly and um, we want to be able to continue to put out good quality uh, stuff um, and even be able to put out more, st- more things. And that is going to require uh us to have a little bit more time. So we will um, be asking for support and um, people have already expressed interest in doing that. And we really, we, you know, will appreciate that. And um, we're going to bring, we're going to, we're going to bring some cool shit and there's going to be opportunities for people to, you know, be more involved and have more interaction with us and with each other. We want you guys to interact with each other. Um, we want to create a platform for, yes. you know, for people who genuinely creatives, are doing the work. New visionary creatives in consciousness and, and, and taking this to another level that's proactive. You, yeah. you know, I think the one thing that we all agree on is we've got to create our way out of this. Yep, that's, that, that's, and, we, and, and we need to have a good time doing it because exactly. we have a lot of work. Yeah. We have yeah. a lot of, this is not a small task we're, we're taking on. And so it's going to be a long task. And since it's going to be long, we have to enjoy it while we do it. So, um, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to bring some, we're going to bring some serious information. We're also going to bring some really cool shit and some, and a whole lot of fun. So, um, stay tuned and, um, we love and appreciate you guys. And thank you for doing this little chat with me this morning, Randy. Yeah. Very well. That's going to wrap it up. We, uh, we have some shows in the pipeline. Keep watching, keep listening. 
the truth is out there, it's inside you, and it's like nobody's watching. Yeah, <laughs> right. Cool, cool. Thank you.